Yo, welcome back everybody to another video. So today we're going to be learning about how to pull data and display it into the app. And just as we pull the data, we also have to make sure that we cache the data. So the importance of caching the data is because if we don't do it and we continuously call the API over and over and over again, it can make our app a little bit slower as well as run up the bill for the actual API provider. So the way that we're going to be caching the data is we're going to be using something called React Query. Now this is an amazing third party tool which in a couple of steps that we're going to do today will help us set up and start caching whatever data we pull from the API. So let's go ahead and get started. So there's a couple of packages that we need to install. The first one being React Query. And the way that we can do that is really simple. All we have to do is npmi at tanstack slash React Query. And then after that, we need to install something called Axios. That's basically going to allow us to do HTTP requests pretty easily and it goes really well with uh, React Query. So go ahead and do that and press enter. So we do need to initialize our React Query just like we did for our React navigation. So just like we did that, we need to encapsulate our entire app in something called that uh, React Query provides. It's called Query Client Provider. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go ahead and encapsulate my app in that. So I'm gonna do Query Client Provider like so and then take that ending tag and I'm going to put it at the very bottom like so. And after that, I'm going to provide this a uh, prop and it's going to be called client is equal to query client. And I'm going to create that function outside of here. So I'll just go ahead and do const query client is equal to new query client. So this initializes our actual uh, React query to be able to start running and everything. So now what we need to do is we need to create a new hook that is going to be talking to the GCAN API. So let me just show you guys an example of how this API actually makes requests. So we have to do a simple get request to this URL called, let me zoom in a little bit, called API GCAN Mo V4 Anime. So that's our version four of the API. And it gives us about 25 uh, rows of data. And this is what we're going to be displaying initially. And later on, we're going to do pagination or whatever. But right now, this is what we're going to display. So now in your hooks folder, which is right here, create a new file and we're going to call it get all anime query dot JS. And all of our hooks are going to follow this exact template. It's going to be called get all or get some or get something. It'll define what we're trying to do, either get post or whatever. So the way that we're going to start this off, we're going to, we're going to have to import use query from at and stack react query and then we have to import axios from axios and after that we're going to create a variable called const all anime url so this is, this is just a string that's going to be the exact same thing that we put inside of this postman right here so it is going to be https colon double slash api dot gcan dot mo slash v4 slash anime and this is also in the description down below if you want to just go and copy that as well now after that, we're going to create a new function. So what this function is going to do is we're going to make a simple get request to this URL and just return the data. So the way that we're going to do that is const get all anime is equal to async. And we're going to create a function right here like so. And we're going to do const response is equal to await axios.get and all we have to do is pass an all anime URL and then all we have to do is return response. So basically what we're doing is what we're doing here is in this function, we're making an Axios call to this URL and just returning the data. Let's do response dot data. There we go. And now what we have to do is we need to use React Query so that we can cache this data and return it back to our front end. And for that to work, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a function that we're going to export. So I'll do export const use whoops it'll be capital use get all anime is equal to function call like so and you might be wondering why did we capitalize this but now this was well, because react query is really really strict about making sure that this is a react function in their eyes and that it has to be a capital so we're going to use we're going to call it use get all anime and after that we're going to create a, a another variable we're going to do is const curly braces is loading and data after that we're going to do is equal to use query 
and in curly braces and array block I'm gonna create a name for this I'll call it all anime and after that I'll do get all anime so we're gonna call that function and then finally we're gonna return the data so the return data and is loading. So let me just quickly explain to you what is happening here. So we have these two variables here called is loading and data. What do they mean? Well, very simply, use query from React Query allows us to return a certain amount of things from the actual um, use query function. So we have things such as data is loading. We have data updated error failure count is error fetched a whole lot of things but a lot of the cases this is basically all you need you need to check if is the item loading and if you have the data or not now you can also do uh, is error and error however we don't need that because we're just going to be displaying a simple spinner that um, will either stop loading and display an error if there's no data or actually display the data and after that we have the use query right here so very simply, the, the thing that use query does is we can pass it a certain function, data, or whatever we want, and then it'll take it, and then it will cache the results into our device. That's at a high level what it does. That's pretty much all you really need to know about it at this point in time, at least. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and actually use this bad boy in our app and see what it returns. So I'm going to go back into my home.js file and underneath my uh, home screen and above my return I'm going to do const curly braces is equal to use get all anime and I'm gonna go ahead and import it now you might be wondering what should we name this well remember we're not really naming it anything we're trying to actually receive the data so we're actually going to be calling the things that it returns to us so in these curly braces if I do um, command plus oops not command plus control plus you see that we have two different props. We have data and is loading. Now you might be thinking, that's very similar to what we're returning here. That's exactly what this is. It's gonna be returning us two things. It's gonna return the data and whether or not it is loading or not. So now that we've returned this, let's go ahead and actually display this. So the way that we're gonna display this is gonna be a little tricky, but allow me to explain it to you in a very simple term. So we can't just do curly braces and do data. We can't do that because number one, React is going to throw out an error that says um, you can't just do data. You need to encapsulate this in text. You need to extrapolate the data out of it. You got to do some more stuff to it. You can't just show data because sometimes data doesn't exist and it's actually still loading. So what we have to do is we need to create a ternary operator. So initially, what this is is a uh, if statement basically that checks um, a case. So our case is going to be is it loading? And if it is loading, we want to return something. So ideally, we would want to return like a spinner. But in this case, I'm just going to type in here loading dot dot dot. And let's say it's done loading. What should we do? Well, in that case, we want to do data. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. We can't just show data here. Let's say we don't have any data to show. Let's say there's an error. The internet is off. Well, we need to actually take care of that as well. So if we just do data and we do another ternary operator, we can say, hey, is the data available? If it is, then fantastic. So I'm going to do data.data.map. So this is going to map over all of the data that we were receiving from the API. And we'll just do um, anime and key. And inside of here, I'll do return. And we'll do a simple view. And instead of the view, we're going to do a text tag. And inside of the text tag, we're just going to print the um, the title of the anime. So I'm just going to do item, oops, not item, anime dot title. And now let's say that, hey, we don't have any data to show. It's done loading, but there's an error. The way that we're going to handle that is at the end of the ternary operator, we're just going to do curly braces like so. And we'll just show it a uh, text for now that says, whoops, no data available available I think that's how you spell it cool alrighty so now let's go ahead and start up our app and see what happens so I'm going to do npm start that'll start up our metro server and then inside of my emulator I'm going to go into the actual app manually 
Oops, I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh the app really quickly. So I'm gonna go back into the app, then it's going to bundle everything. And now we can see loading, and then we see all of our anime list. Now initially it is actually actually checking, hey, is the data cached? If it's not cached, then pull it from the API. If it is cached, then pull it from the cache. So we are gonna be working with this a lot throughout the app. So if it's a little confusing right now, don't worry, we're gonna do it a lot of times as we make different type of API calls throughout the actual app. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see y'all in the next one where we're gonna be covering something called a flat list. And we're gonna make our app look a little bit better than just a piece of uh, list text. So stay tuned and I'll see you then, peace.